Hello, this is Ken here for Big Picture English. Today we're going to take a look at how you can learn colligations. What's so funny? What mistake? I've hardly said anything and I've made a mistake already? That's not a mistake. Colligations is a real word for real things and they are different from collocations. Yes, as I said, they are different from collocations, but both collocations and colligations are very important if learners want to speak and write well. You see, hey, is that you snoring? Sorry if you find this boring. I thought you were interested in learning about colligations. So are you interested or not? Good. Okay, well actually, you just used a colligation. I'm interested in learning. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, there, that's better. Okay, where was I? Uh, yes, what is a colligation? Well, let me give you some collocations with interested to go with the colligation of interested. As you can see, both collocations and colligations are about putting words together with other words, but they are different. Can you see the difference? Maybe you have figured it out. Collocations are made up of two words, like very interested or interested people. Collocations are made with a noun, verb, adjective, or adverb used with one other noun, verb, adjective, or adverb. In other words, two words from the four main parts of speech. Colligations are two or more words, but colligations are made with a noun, verb, adjective, or adverb used with other parts of speech, especially prepositions like interested in. Some words in English have important colligations and interested is one of them. The colligation of interested is basically a structure you need to know to use the word correctly. Let's look at that structure now. It starts with the verb be and then our word interested, plus the preposition in, and then, well, let's make it a little test. What comes next? That's a common mistake. It looks just like a verb, but it's not. It's a gerund. A gerund is simply an ing verb used as a noun. We can tell when it's a gerund because we can also use a noun in its place. For example, we could say, I'm interested in learning, or I'm interested in school. So here is the complete colligation. Be plus interested plus in plus gerund or noun. Great example. You've used the noun fish. You're interested in fish. Do you want to become a marine biologist? Oh, now I understand. You see, now that you know the colligation, you can use it for many different things, even eating fish. Okay, let's try that out. Take a look at this picture. Use a colligation with I'm interested in or I'm not interested in for as many things as you can in this picture in 10 seconds. For example, like our cat, you could say I'm interested in fish 
or I'm interested in eating fish. Okay, 10 seconds, start now. Okay, here are just a few examples, but there are many more. You see how useful one little colligation is. That's why you need to learn as many colligations as you can. That is a colligation, but it's not useful to learn it. Here's why. Actually, there are two colligations of kitchen here. Kitchen with the preposition in and kitchen with the determiner the. But it's not useful to pay attention to these colligations because all you have to do is learn one rule instead of thousands of colligations. For example, if you know that the preposition in is used with nouns that have an inside, then all you need to do is remember that in a box, in the bathroom, in England, in my pocket. It would be stupid to memorize in and all the nouns it can go with. The same is true with the de determiner the. All you need to remember is that you can use the with any singular countable noun. That's all. So it's not useful to learn these type of colligations. Just learn the rules. It's this kind of colligation you need to learn. Don't be sorry. You should never be sorry about asking questions. It's how we learn. That's a good question. Well, I've already said that once you learn a colligation, you can usually use it for hundreds of different things. But let's talk about the four-step method to learning vocabulary. When you learn a new word, you need to learn four things. Let's see if you can guess what they are. Okay, here they are. When you learn a new word, you need to learn the meaning, the form, the pronunciation, and the usage. Let's see how this works with this word, approach. So the meaning is a way of doing something. The form is noun. Here is the pronunciation. And last but not least is the usage. If you learn a new word, you need to know how to use it. For new words with important colligations, you won't be able to use the word correctly without learning the colligations that it has. And yes, a word can have more than one colligation. So for approach, here it is approach plus the preposition to plus a noun or a gerund. It's an approach to learning. It's a new approach to teaching. It's an interesting approach to the problem. You have a different approach to life. And a great lover of fish. Okay, now the most important part. How to learn colligations. How to learn colligations. The method is basically the same as the learning method in our collocations video. First you should notice when words have colligations. Then you should decide if the colligations are useful. B plus interested plus in plus gerund or noun is useful if you don't already know it. When you find something useful, then you should analyze it. This is what we did with the colligation with interested. We identified the parts that made it up. This is important for knowing how to use it. Then you need to remember the colligations and use them. Okay, take about 10 seconds and see if you can notice a colligation 
on this board. Here it is, it's in the title, and it's a very useful colligation for writing titles. So if you think it's useful, you need to analyze it. That's correct. Now try to remember it and use it. That's good, but it's also important to use it in a meaningful way. Uh, we'll talk about that after the video. Uh, now for something very important. Do you know what time it is? Nope, sorry, it's joke time. You know, it's very difficult to notice and analyze colligations when you listen. So to get practice noticing colligations, you're going to read a joke instead of listening to it. You should always read the first time just to understand. So read the joke now and don't even think about colligations. Okay, now read it over again and notice any words that have important colligations. Remember to look for nouns, verbs, adjectives, or adverbs, because they are the words that have colligations. Take about a minute to do that now. So these words all have important colligations. Now take about half a minute and see if you can guess what the colligations are. Okay, so the verb ask is with the conjunction if. The noun interest has the determiner any before it and the preposition in after it. The noun display is used with the preposition on. The verb inquire is used with the preposition about. The verb ask is again used with a conjunction, this time whether. And finally, the verb increase is with the preposition in. But we need a little more to be able to complete the colligations. Ask if is followed by a clause. That's a sentence inside a sentence. For example, he asked if he could leave. She asked if it was a problem. A determiner plus interest in is followed by a noun or gerund. For example, do you have any interest in going? I have an interest in music. He asked about my interest in working there. We use a noun before on display. There were some nice clothes on display. Inquire about is followed by a noun or gerund. He inquired about the job. He inquired about working there. Ask whether is the same as ask if. He asked whether he could go. An increase in is followed by a noun. For example, 
to increase in price, to increase in amount, to increase in number. So to conclude, if you learn colligations, you can use them in so many different ways. For example, Well, finally something you like. And that's it. Make sure you check out more of our videos for improving your English by looking at the big picture at Big Picture English, our YouTube channel. Subscribe today.